Thanks everybody for turning up. Joel Ben here, business analyst in the services team. Um, so the developers did a great job over six months of plug and play architecture that we can extend quite easily and quite quickly. Um, one of the outcomes of that was really um, these plug and play widgets and services that um, we can offer through this developer toolbox. And also um, going forward, we can off offer additional ones as open source tools that people can extend and also feed back into our repository as well. And the, the, the services themselves sort of expose um, a lot of the powerful components behind the registry and Research Data Australia to external developers. Um, so these are things like searches um, and vocabulary um, services to pull information out of our vocabularies that we've got published. Um, obviously, external users can use them to tap into and explore the Australian Research Data Commons or Research Data Australia. Um, and the services themselves are, are used in a lot of the case to underpin the ANS widgets. So as I said before, if a developer has sort of hit the limits of a widget where they'd like to extend it, um, they can actually look at these services themselves and either extend the widget or, or build their own uh, widgets um, by these services. These are, these are quite well documented. Um, the first service is the Get Rivers Yes API. And this is just a way to, to really get access to the contents of the collections registry itself. Um, via the service, you can perform quite complex searches um, of the registry to pull back specific records or records in a specific group based on specific subjects and things like that. Now, this service itself pulls out RIFCS XML, um, so it's useful to people that understand RIFCS XML um, or are using it in their own um, repository. It's also one of the uses is obviously to populate a pick list or a lookup service. So there may be, um, again, in, in a repository, people are doing the relationships to RIFCS uh, to records, um, and they can basically do a populated pick list um, of, say, collections or parties from a certain institution or, or grants from uh, a specific year or something similar to that. So again, just the address researchdataustralia.ans.org.au forward slash developers. The web services themselves, um, they're not as pretty because there's no real fancy front end to them. Um, there are little explanation diagrams um, for each, uh, I think nearly all of the, the services that we have, um, just showing sort of how they work. There's obviously the description and the use cases for each of the services, how people might want to implement them and the useful points about, about them. As you can see here, before you start, the one thing to note about the services themselves is that um, any developer that wants to use them actually has to register for a API key that they pass um, when they call them ser the services. And that's just a way of us knowing and identifying who's actually using the services. Um, you don't have to be a user with a log on to the registry. Um, you can just click the link and it'll take you to a publicly accessible page where you fill out the organisation, the contact email and why you want to uh, basically use the, the API key. Um, and you click register and it will right there and then generate you a key to pass with the service calls. Um, in much the same way as the widgets, we have tables containing all the parameters that can be passed to the services themselves. And again, the developers will understand that. And if they don't, they can get in contact via the community forum. There's a couple of, in some of the, the services, they're a little bit trickier. There's sort of some sort of FAQs or common questions about the services just to help out. Um, and a couple of example uses of uh, working service calls. Um, and that's pretty much all I've got.